Hello everyone, welcome to Gypsy Jazz Fridays episode 13. And in last week's episode we were learning Django's solo on minor swing from his 1949 recordings in Rome and I had so much fun doing that that I decided to do another uh, Django solo but now from an earlier time when he was playing with the Hot Tub de France and it's one of his most striking solos. It's a solo that I always wanted to learn and I finally made the plunge and learned it. And it's his solo on a tune called my sweet. Of course, go listen to the original. There's a link to the original recording in the description. But I transcribed the whole solo and we're going to talk about the first two choruses. And then I'll make another video about the last chorus, especially for my Giant Steppers patrons. Let's get started. The solo starts with a chorus of octaves. Uh, I guess it's the theme. Although I'm not completely sure what the theme is because they only played once at the beginning. So this is probably the theme and it's played completely with octaves. If you are already very proficient with octaves, then most of this will be very easy, but there is still some challenging parts. If you are bad with octaves, this is a good song to start practicing your octaves. So here is the first four bars. Let me play them. They're pretty easy. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Just uh, four quarter notes on beat one. You want to play them with a little bit of uh, uh, attitude, but I'm not going to spend too much time on this part. Let's go on. I, I want to say, though, that if you want to play octaves, if you've never done it before, I'm not trying to hit two only these two strings, right? I'm trying to hit the bottom four strings or something, and then my other fingers are muting the strings I'm not playing. So I'm now playing, for the first note, I'm playing the high E string and uh, the G string. And then my second finger here is just muting the, the bottom three strings. And then my, the fleshy part of my first finger is muting the string in between my first finger and my pinky. And every string set, if you want to play octaves, has different ways to mute them. But that really depends on your hand, how big it is. So you just got to find a way to mute the strings that you don't want to play. Okay, uh, next four bars. Let me play those. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's not play the fourth bar yet. Okay, so far we have this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Pretty easy. I have a backing track on my channel. I will link that to that in the description. So let's just play these first seven bars with the backing track. All downstrokes, even I don't do something, no. Give them some real power. Okay, now we get a really tricky, maybe the most tricky part of this octave passage. So in the last bar here, we have still have this. It's a D major triad. Ending in... So the whole thing would be one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now this is really difficult to play uh, at the real tempo. And mind you, my backing track is slower than the original tempo. The original tempo is about 270 and my backing track is about 255 or about, it's exactly 255 
on purpose a little bit slower to make it a little easier. But even then, I often miss this. It's just very difficult to coordinate this with left and right hand. The only tip I can give you is to take your time playing this. Even if that means that you're too late with this, doesn't matter. If you can articulate those first three notes, then it will be okay. As you can see, there's a little slide on the last F sharp. That's because Django plays just a little, gives the, the notes some extra juice. So let's play the first um, part until here. See that works. I, I tried to articulate those first three notes, but even then it can go wrong. Then we continue. So the second bar, one, two, one, two, three, four. So I play down, down, up, down. So I can end on a downstroke on the E. You can also start with a downstroke and end with an upstroke, but I find it more powerful to do. So I have a downstroke on that last E. And you just Time, you play triplets with your right hand, take a digging. And you time your left hand to end, uh, to start at the C sharp and end at the E at the right time. Doesn't really matter if it's not completely in sync. Of course, you want to try to play it in sync, but it, it's more an effect. That's not that difficult. But then we get, and that's again, it's very difficult, especially to articulate every note. So there's a couple tricks. You can do it like this, like Django, he's playing all downstrokes and he has really great articulation. But uh, for me, an easier way, kind of a cheat code would be to do down slide. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that makes it much easier. So if I ever gonna perform it, then probably I would do that because this is just asking for a disaster. Let's finish this so we can play the whole octave thing. Then we, again, we have these little slides on those. Uh, you have to pay attention to the rhythm uh, in the second bar. The, the, the D is on the three end. So one, two, three, ka. So you get one, two, three, pa. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, and then we come to the last line. We get from the previous system. Pretty easy. Notice that all those notes in the last two systems, they are on the beat, except for that uh, the third bar, the D. But, but this part, all on the beat. So make sure you really play them on the beat. Da, da, do, da, pa. And then, again, all notes on the beat. So let's play that whole uh, part with the backing track. By the way, if you want to download these steps, they are available on my Patreon and they are available to every level of my Patreon. So also the lowest levels, they can also download this one. Take a look there if you want the tab. Let's play the whole thing. Now we get to the solo. The solo is really fun to play, but <laughs> extremely difficult because there are so many really Django-esque techniques. If you master those techniques, then probably it's very doable, but I had to learn a whole bunch of new stuff to be able to play it. So I've practiced this for many hours. So just so you know, it's, it's not gonna go automatic. Okay, first, let's do first three bars. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Okay, a couple of things. It might seem easy, but this is what I would call the equivalent of a tongue twister, like a difficult sentence you have to say. It's across three strings with 
almost the same finger rings, but then you need some pull-offs and you need some sweeps and you have to change position at the last moment. So it's very easy to just mess this up. So a couple of tips. To not mess up at the beginning, one tip that I learned from classical violin is to not focus on the first note too much because that probably will be okay, but focus on the second or the third note to make sure that you have that one so that you don't have this false start, right? So you could focus on the F sharp here or on the A. I usually focus on the A. Right, I give a little accent there. And then I'm probably safe for the first eight notes or so. Now the next thing to focus on is this D to the E, which is a sweep if you're a gypsy jazz speaker like me. So the ears are pull off, sweep, pull off again, and then there's this position change on the B in bar three, like that. So again, you want to focus on the second or third note, pull off, sweep, Position change. And I'm, I'm saying these things to myself when I practice slowly. It, it would be like, I, I make them like one syllable, it would be like third or so, to focus on the third note. Sweep, change, right? Something like that. And I would actually say that out loud. People always ask me, how do you practice these things? In the beginning, I would say that out loud to really hammer home that I have to think about those things. So it would be something like this. With a metronome, let me show you so that you know how to practice this. So I would have a metronome. I would start with the metronome on all four beats in a slow tempo. So let's say it's tempo 150. I would have a different click on the one, like this. It can be even slower, right? But let's do slower so I can, you can really hear what I'm saying. Let's do 120. One, two, third, sweep, change. Third, sweep, change. And I would do that, I would loop it and loop it over and over again. At one point, of course, maybe after I've said it five times, I wouldn't say it out loud, but I would still be thinking it. One, two. And these kinds of anchor points in the fast line will keep you in control of the line. Now you don't have to depend on your fingers and your pick making the right movements automatically, maybe after some time, but now you can really focus on details within the phrase. And I would speed up the metronome gradually and I would go to one and three. And eventually I would go to, let's say we're at tempo 200. I would go to the metronome on beats two and four. All right, so it would sound something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now I can detect that I'm rushing a little bit, for instance, and I would try to correct that. And then I would go to the metronome on only beat two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Like that. And I would do that for, for many hours. I mean, not only this one thing, right? But this kind of progression with this one phrase, I might just stick with this one phrase for an hour until I'm reasonably confident I have progressed. And then I would go on. And then the next day I would do, I'll do it all over again because you will see that it somehow seems that you didn't do anything the first day, but you did. And it will go much faster the second day. Okay, um, let's go on before I play with the backing track. So we're in the, thir in the fourth bar, we get so just let's remember that. And then we have this phrase. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, mm. Now the beginning is easy with, with two open strings. Then we have this phrase. That's just the way I like to play it because I like to play minor six arpeggios with this exact string ring. One, four, two, one, three, two, one, three. That's just something I practice a lot. So whenever I see a minor six arpeggio, 
I probably will take that fingering. That's also the way it's written in the tab. But Django actually plays this. With two open strings, an open G string and an open E string. I, I did practice it for a while, but in the end I have more accuracy using my uh, fingering, but you can use Django's thing. I find the picking a little bit more difficult. Okay, and let's talk about that thing. So, in the beginning I was playing it like this. So I would hit the B and I would immediately start tremoloing, I would play. And I would just slide down and then on the beat I would hit this F sharp. With a downstroke. And that sounds fine, but if you listen to Django play it slowly, what you hear is this. You hear a quarter note, and on the second beat he plays three notes while sliding. But he's doing it like this. So he's sliding with the finger he's gonna land on, on that F sharp. Now I tried that and um, it's doable, but it's much more difficult for me to do it like that than sliding with the finger I start with. Just because I can put a new finger down on the ending note. With an upstroke, by the way, I was saying that wrong. So now I do that. I play quarter note, then I play this slide, I tr play a triplet, which note I'm hitting is not important, I'm just sliding down. And then an accent on that F sharp with a new finger. Instead of doing it like Django, which is almost the same sound. You could argue that Django's way sounds a little bit more organic, but uh, if I would do it that way, I would mess it up uh, many times. So, and uh, believe me, I tried. So I'm doing it like this. The whole beginning part, three, four, one, two. Let's play that with the backing track. It's gonna take some practice because I still f feel that it is difficult to stay in control and not rush. Okay, let's go on. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now to start with the ending, it's a G major try it up. And we get the same effect as uh, in the previous system. So a quarter note and then a slide on a triplet up on the last note. And again, Django is of course doing that. He's doing the sliding with the finger he's gonna end on. And I'm gonna slide with the finger I'm starting on. Now the first two bars are interesting. I wrote it down the way it sounds on the recording. It sounds like this. I actually wrote down notes, it says this. But uh, Django is just playing, and now he's sliding down with this, uh, with this, from this C, and you hear two notes kind of in the middle of the slide, ending on the G, like that. Very jungle-like, but I'm betting the notes he actually wants to play are these notes. Because the chord is F sharp minor. So I have now inclination to play it like that. Staying in position, 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1. That's something that I discovered kind of today, I want to do that. So I'm going to leave it like that. But if you want to play it like Django, you just do play C, which is kind of weird, and then slide down to the G. Okay, let's play that with the backing track, or should we do the next? No, let's do the next system. Because then we get this really nice thing that I really had to practice a lot, because now we get this sliding Django trick one after another, from the F sharp to the... C sharp from the E to the B, from the D to the A, from the C sharp to the G, and from the B 
to the E, like this. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So a couple of tips would be to really give an accent on the last note that you end on. Make the, the triplet in between, the sliding triplet, make them a little bit softer. And um, make sure that you play the starting note and the ending note on the beat. And make sure that you play a quarter note followed by a triplet. One, taga di, tan, tibidi. I tried many different things, but that works best, especially when you get to the real tempo. So I practiced this for many hours with a metronome, and I would do the same thing. One, two, three, four, beat one and three, beat two and four, only beat two. And it's really very difficult to make it work, both rhythmically, um, technically, and just to make it sound like Django, to make it sound as brilliant as he is making it sound. So go listen to the original recording and spend some time to make this work. And for me, sometimes it really works, and other times I think, okay, that could have been better. It sounds a little bit sloppy, for instance. So let's play the beginning of the second chorus until, until here, until this last bar. was quite okay I think. Okay, go on. We get to the G minor part. Uh, start in the bar before this bar. One, two, three, four, one, two. I went on with the next system because it's not that difficult. So let's uh, talk about this system. We have this, this G minor tried up, and I like to put my fingers down in this shape. Right? Of course, Django is playing it like this, which is actually very difficult to do if you think about coordination. He was used to it because he only was playing with two fingers, but for me, I, in that kind of pattern, I like to have a chord shape and keep my fingers down. So that part, so there's the next system. Those Gs, they are on the beat and it's very easy to rush those, to play them uh, falling forward. Don't do that, try to really uh, hold back and play them on the beat. Same, same thing in, in, the, in the third bar. So the whole thing, one, two, three, four, one. Mm. Okay, that was the complete second chorus. So now we have both choruses. Uh, let's play the whole solo until now. That was the complete solo, I also played the third chorus, and of course I'm gonna do the complete walkthrough of the third chorus for my Giant Steppers patrons. Now if you're not a patron, you can still work on those first two choruses, they're a lot of fun and there's lots of cool Django techniques in them. I really hope you're gonna enjoy working on it, I certainly have enjoyed it and I will continue to work on it because 
it can always become better. And the only thing you have to do to convince yourself of that is listen to the original recording of Django playing it because he's playing it with a tremendous amount of musicality which really makes this solo come alive. And also uh, Grappelli's solo after it is amazing with Django's fills behind it. Just go listen to it. There's a link to it in the description. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.